Welcome to another episode of Monster Monday from the Ready to Die channel. This series explores the design of a creature I have built for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. The stat block for this creature can be found over on the Monster Monday blog, as well as the Twitter and Discord, all of which are linked below. Many of the ideas I have are constrained by my lack of art, because I want to present art specific to the creature and that I've acquired when I share these concepts. This week, featuring art from Czar, who you can find in a link in the description below, is a concept I've had percolating for a while, the Hell Maw Salamander. Now, before we get into it, there's something I have to confess. I tested this creature three times. The first time was a complete wash. The Hell Maw dealt no damage to the party. The second was a bit more balanced, but the players didn't have to spend a single resource to win the fight. So, I then ran a third test on my own, and this turned out much more balanced. Characters actually failed their saving throws instead of rolling countless critical successes, but this test went unrecorded. Ultimately, what I'm saying is that there isn't any monster mash this time around, because I sure as hell am not posting the videos I have recorded for it. They are a slog, and not fun for anybody. As for this creature, it is inspired by hellbenders, as well as the ancient belief that the jaws of crocodiles led to hell. Like the Bebelith to the Abyss, the Hellmaw Salamander is a native creature to Hell, and unlike the other diabolic denizens, is decidedly docile. Its ability to create gates from its home to the material plane make it a valuable target for devils, leading to many of them seeking refuge on other planes. However, their size and appetite can cause disruptions, leading them into conflict with the natives of those other planes they traverse to. Given its ability to move itself and others through planes, it is designed as a level 16 creature, where players have access to Plane Shift, or whatever it's called now in the remaster, so that they can save displaced allies. Based on the traits of the Bebelith, it is a beast and a fiend, but it's still a salamander, leading to the amphibious trait as well, which will allow it to survive in the waterways of the worlds it visits. In my initial design of the Hellmaw, it was a much beefier, burly creature, but with how numbers worked out, I wanted to do some adjusting to its ability scores, and was partially inspired by the art I got for it as well. In either case, it has an extreme strength score, largely due to its sheer immensity. It uses a high dexterity based on its more sinuous shape. I can imagine this thing just twisting and sliding through the water, and is actually swapped with Constitution, which is moderate in the revised ability scores, which is again, based on the more slender appearance it has. Its wisdom is also moderate, letting it stand against the corruptive influence of its home, while its intelligence is fit for a beast, but borderline animalistic. The Hellmaw has a low perception score, as they're kind of oblivious creatures. These things eat similar to whales or basking sharks, simply swinging around with their mouths open and drawing stuff in. A high athletic skill helps it gobble down enemies, while it has a low stealth skill to help it hide from devils seeking to harness its power. Based on its above average dexterity, the Hellmaw has a high armor class, as it moves with surprising grace and agility, ably avoiding attacks from adversaries. Its hit points are at the high end of moderate, and these design choices are what led to me actually readjusting the values of its ability scores. Both its will and reflex are high, with the former based on its familiarity with Hell and its inhabitants. Hell Maws have naturally developed some resilience against the mental manipulations of Devils. This leaves its Fortitude bonus at a terrible value, which is a change that came about during one of the monster mashes. As a resident of Hell, it is immune to fire damage, but based on some of the remaster stuff, it also has a moderate resistance to spirit damage. Now, the test unfortunately had a giant instinct barbarian who was carving about a fifth of the Hellmaw's health away with every swing. I felt like it was going down too quick, but thought that was mostly due to dealing with the glassiest of cannons and so didn't make too many adjustments. But if this thing is going down too quick in your game, I'd consider giving it fast healing or regeneration stopped by holy spirit damage. Even the Hellmaw's offensive capabilities underwent a few alterations though its high attack bonus is a remnant from even before the other changes I made. Its tail has the sweep trait, and packs one heck of a wallop by dealing high damage, as it brings its entire body's weight to bear when making such attacks. From a more mechanical aspect, it uses as high damage as it lacks the additional effects of the Hellmaw's Jaws attack, which only deal moderate damage. But these Jaws also have improved grab, and its eponymous ability, Hell's Maw. This is a pretty simple power that triggers on a critical hit, and immediately sends a creature to the Hellmaw's Diabolical Domain. I added this effect to give it some quicker ways to send creatures there, 
when it gets lucky, instead of having to rely on a multitude of checks or saves, as its other abilities do. But before we get into those, we should discuss the Diabolical Domain, which is a central ability to this Abyssal Amphibian. I actually referenced a Rift Stalker that I designed to help figure out this ability, but had to make some adjustments since its habitat is linked to a whole dimension. I learned from that creature that it should be a single check to escape, and chose Occultism and Religion for both Int or Wisdom characters, but then also included Perception since every creature has that. Creatures that can't escape take unlimited use area damage at a moderate will DC, as well as when they first arrive there. You should notice that this damage is half Fire and half Spirit damage to cover the Hell part of the Hellfire. And while the Hellmaw is a benign, if not docile creature, this is fire from Hell itself which, unfortunately, makes it unholy. The third test did reveal to me that I need to give creatures a way out when the Hellmaw dies, due to a series of bad rolls that kill the Barbarian when it should have been an easy encounter. So, when it passes on, creatures that are trapped there come back to the Material Plane. The Hellmaw has two other ways to banish enemies to its personal purgatory, and we'll start by discussing its Drag to Hell, a two-action ability that targets all creatures in a 60-foot cone. These creatures have to make a fortitude save against an extreme DC, which all my players seemed intent on succeeding or critically succeeding against during the test. But once a creature gets pulled adjacent to the Hellmall, it has to make a will save against a high DC, or be sent to the Diabolical Domain. I included two saves, because this can take a person out of the fight, and that can create a big swing in an encounter. So this helps prevent that, it just was rough to play with in the test though. The biggest issue I found were that players that failed the first save almost always seemed to succeed at the second. This did lead to the inclusion on the final line of its ability, where enemies that stay too close to it are in danger of taking worse results on their saves, helping it inflict the core aspect of its kit, as it honestly struggled to do in the first two mashes. Its other way of sending enemies to its domain is Swallow Hole, where instead of swallowing a creature normally, it sends them straight there. This ability is expanded upon with Fast Swallow, allowing it to swiftly swallow samples. While it costs a reaction, this potentially allows it to deviously devour a danger in a single action due to improved grab. Most of the powers of this stick swimming salamander involve consigning an adversary to the abyss, but the Hellmall can also go in reverse with its Flames of Hell. This unleashes a gout of Hellfire in a massive cone that deals limited use area damage at a high reflex DC. And this is a pretty standard effect, you have seen hundreds of these by now. However, it has additional effects if there are creatures in its diabolic domain, as these creatures are spewed out along with the fire. As they're pulled through the portal alongside the hellfire, their saves are treated as being one degree of success worse, which helps to counteract evasion. This feature and others like it were the biggest problems for the Hellmaw in the test, as many of its abilities prove completely ineffectual because of them. Maybe that's just the design of high level creatures, I'm still figuring it out, if I am being honest, how to make it work. Now naturally, the Hellmall can use its Diabolical Dive to return home or travel back to the Material Plane, though there could be others that have found ways to other planes depending on what you need for your adventure. The Hellmall does have one final reaction with Leak Hell, which competes with Fast Swallow, but I included this as a more defensive capability, letting it erupt with Hellfire that deals unlimited use area damage at a high DC reflex save. This is also a reaction it can use if it doesn't happen to hit any creature with its jaws on its turn. It depends on what the Hellmall wants or needs at the moment as to whether it wants to save its reaction for this or a fast swallow. Ultimately, I think this creature turned out fine. But if you use it and find some flaws with it, please let me know and I'll see what adjustments I need to make. Despite its diabolical design, this diver between dimensions dares not delve into depravity, depending on devilry only during defense. These aren't aggressive creatures, but can endanger inhabitants and wildlife of an area on sheer accident, or hunger, leading them to be a problem for the heroes to confront. Alternatively, they are sometimes enslaved by devils and used to invade the material plane, which could also lead to a fun little encounter with them. Let me know what you think of this creature and what others you would like to see down in a comment. If you want to see other monsters I've done, or even the staff blocks and other versions of this monster, check out the Monster Monday blog or Twitter linked below. Thank you for watching, and have a monstrous Monday.